Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one I will show you how to install Windows 10 on a 64-bit Mac that has a 32-bit EFI without using another computer. This applies to the MacBook 2.1, MacBook Pro 2.2, Mac Pro 1.1, iMac 5.1, 5.2 and 6.1 and also to the MacBook Air 1.1. But here you need an external DVD drive. If you just put a normal Windows install DVD in your Mac's disk drive, you will see the following picture. A menu where it looks like you can select from two entries, but your keyboard does actually nothing. But why? Why can't we just boot from DVD or even USB sticks like on newer Macs? The reason is that the first generation of 64-bit Macs from around 2006, using the Core 2 Duo chips, still had a 32-bit EFI. Normally, a boot medium for a 64-bit operating system expects a 64-bit EFI. So we need to patch the Windows DVD to allow it to be booted on these older Macs. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about what you need. You need a blank DVD, a method to burn DVDs like the Mac Superdrive and of course the Mac itself. So the first step is to download a version of a Windows 10 ISO. Depending on the DVD you want to use, you might need an old Windows 10 ISO and update it to the current version after the installation. That's because 4.7GB DVDs are too small for the newer versions of Windows, specifically newer than the 1803 release. Now download the oscdimg.exe file from the description. OSCD-IMG is a command line tool from Microsoft that can be used to create an image or ISO file of a customized 32-bit or 64-bit version of the Windows pre-install environment. In other words, we need this to patch our Windows ISO file to be able to boot on a 32-bit EFI. Now you could just use this file on another computer that has Windows on it or in a virtual machine on your Mac, but I will show you a method where you actually don't need Windows and don't need another computer. For this we will use a program called Wine to run the OSCD IMG program directly from macOS. You first need to have Xquartz installed. You can download it from the website in the description. For my old macOS Snow Leopard I had to use Xquartz 2.7. After relock or reboot we can install Wine. I also had to use a very old version of Wine since I'm running Snow Leopard, but most Macs this age can actually run way newer versions of macOS, so you can probably use a newer version of Wine. Again, a link is in the description. And after Wine is installed, we can start patching our Windows 10 ISO. The first step to do this is to copy the OSCD IMG into Wine's directory. The Wine folder is located in your user directory. There navigate to any directory you want to use. It really doesn't matter which one you choose, so I just chose the desktop folder in Wine. There I copied the oscdimg.exe file and created two new folders. One for the ISO file we will use as a source and one for the output ISO. Next we need to extract the Windows 10 ISO into the ISO folder we just created. The easiest way to do this is to mount the ISO file by double clicking it. Now just to be on the safe side, I enabled hidden files to be shown in the finder. For this open the terminal and type the following line. After pressing enter you can close the terminal. Now switch back to the mounted Windows ISO file. Select all the files and drag them into the ISO folder in the Wine directory. Next, open the Wine command prompt, like so. Now change to the desktop directory, using the cd command, or wherever you put your oscdimg.exe. There run the oscdimg using this command. This process might take a while depending on your drive speed and the size of the ISO you used as a source. If everything went well, you should have a file called modded.iso in the output directory. To verify that this ISO was created successfully, you can mount it 
and if it mounts, it will probably be fine. Here we can see the reason why I used the 2018 version of Windows 10. A 3.39 GB large file does fit nicely on a 4.7 GB DVD, which is what I will be using. Now we need to get the modified ISO somehow to boot on our Mac. There are many different methods to accomplish this. We could create a USB drive for example. We could also burn it to a DVD, which is what I did. These older Macs can sometimes be a bit picky about boot media and I had no luck with USB sticks on this MacBook. But you can give it a try. There are many good tutorials out there showcasing how you create such a USB stick. After burning the DVD with your favorite DVD burning program, we need to install one more thing. A different bootloader to boot the Windows DVD and later on the Windows partition from. I used a tool called Refind for this. To install it, just download Refine from the link in the description. After downloading, open a terminal window and type in sudo followed by a white space since we need to run the installer as root and then drag the refined install file into the terminal window. Now press enter. After that, reboot. If refined does not show up here, just reboot again. It can take two reboots for it to show up. Back in macOS, we need to create a partition for our Windows 10 installation. For this, we will use the Bootcamp Assistant. Here you choose the size you want for your Windows partition. After the Bootcamp Assistant is done, we will exit it by clicking Install Later. Now we are finally all set up to install Windows. Shut down your Mac and power it back on with our modified DVD in the drive. So let's install Windows. After starting your Mac, it should boot into the install DVD. If it doesn't, just select it from the Refined Boot menu. Select the version of Windows you have a key for and click Next. Now we have to delete the partition the Bootcamp Assistant created for us and select the free space to install Windows on. After that, we can click Next to start the install. Depending on the DVD drive and hard drive, this might take a substantial amount of time. After a reboot, select the language, keyboard layout and log into your Microsoft account if needed. That's it, we're finally at our desktop. I needed to install many hours of updates since I used a 2018 version of Windows 10. But it did work and we now have Windows 10 up and running. Speed-wise it's a bit slow but usable on this MacBook with only 3GB of RAM but depending on the Mac you use and its CPU, RAM and storage speeds it could actually be quite good. So that's it. On a last note, if you reboot, you will now have the option to boot either macOS or Windows in Refined. If you liked this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.